Sleepless nights, fatigue, memory loss, unpredictable moods and other symptoms are what is described by many women who reach a certain stage in their life. Some even say they become depressed and feel like they're losing their mind. I'm Chrissy B and you are watching the UK's only TV show dedicated to your mental health and well-being. And Verena Matthews, my real life story guest, suffered from some of the things I just mentioned. And she didn't know what was wrong with her but it turned out to be the menopause. Yes, you heard it, the menopause. Now, before all the men switch channels, it would be good for you to stay tuned too if you have a woman in your life, so you can actually learn a few things to be supported because actually relationships have broken down due to not understanding this period in a woman's life. We also have on Dr. Audrey Tang, who's going to be explaining how changes in one's body due to things like the menopause can affect us psychologically. Then we have Helena Shard with the news around this topic. Now exercise, as we know, is good for everyone and lifts your mood. So we're going to be having some fitness tips with Natalia Katowska. Also family coach Sharon Lawton gives us some tips on how to manage family life when you're going through something like the menopause. And we're looking at this issue from all angles today. So we also have on founder of From the Seed and Tisserand aromatherapy expert, Joe Kellett, for tips on the best essential oils that can actually help. Then we'll be getting some expert advice from Dr. Rob Hicks on what happens to a woman physically when she goes through the menopause, the treatments available and what a woman can do to help herself. And we also have our nutritionist Hannah Richards who's going to be making some menopause muffins, so I can't wait for that later on. So let's get cracking with our real life story guest, Verena Matthews. Uh, I first noticed the symptoms of the menopause when I started feeling really tired, really run down, um, very moody. One minute um, I want to cry, the next minute I'm just so sad for no reason. Uh, and um, getting really hot and cold, hot and cold, you know, every minute. So I, I wasn't sure what they were, so I went to the GP. And I explained my symptoms to him and he said, you are going through the menopause. Um, and I just thought this, this, this was it, you know, uh, okay, everybody goes through the menopause, you know, it's going to last a couple of months and um, I'll be fine. Um, but to my horror, the symptoms increased, they became worse, the symptoms, um, just added from a few symptoms to just many, many, many more severe symptoms, such as I lost my memory, um, and I do mean I did lose my memory. It was like I was in a fog all the time, and I just couldn't figure how to get out of that fog. I couldn't remember my weekends. I'd often going to work on a Monday and my colleagues would, would ask, oh, how was your weekend? And I really had to <laughs> think about what my weekend was like because I lost my memory. Um, it got so bad to the point that I couldn't remember any of my clients at work. Um, they would often call me, give me their names and having dealt with their case, having known about their case, I just couldn't remember them. I had to often say to them, can I just call you back in five minutes and then go and look into the files and, and read upon their case, which was terrible. But that was one of the symptoms of the menopause, um, which meant that I c often couldn't remember a thing. And in that, within that time, I felt like I had lost myself. I, you know, when you get to 40 as a woman, you you know who you are, you're settled within yourself, you know the things you like and you know the things you don't like. You really do know who you are. But then bam came the menopause and that was knocked out of the window. I felt like I was living somebody else's life. I had no idea who I was, 
couldn't remember the things that I I even liked. It was I was living uh, day to day in a complete fog, you know, and it was like I was trying to get out of this fog and I couldn't get out and nobody can help me uh, because one of the things with the menopause is often you get professionals say ride it out you know most of the medications that we may prescribe are not good for you you might even get worse side effects from them ride it out so there I was thinking okay let me try and ride this out. It would last, you know, a couple of months or a year. But after three years of this, I realized there was no riding this out. It was, I was in for the long run. And, and that in itself made me feel really, really depressed at times, I have to say, you know. And then you begin to question everything about yourself, everything about yourself, you know, you begin to doubt all the investment that you've made in yourself, you then begin to, to doubt all of that. So it's quite a traumatic event in a woman's life. So in order to cope with everything I was going through, um, I went back to my GP and again, he, he said to me, look, I am going to print out all the symptoms of the menopause to see you're not alone. This is something that happens to a lot of women. And in my personal view, um, you should invest in your health, looking after yourself. Lots of herbal teas, you know, take things to calm you down. At night, you strip off if you feel hot. You know, but one of the things about the menopause, you get these hot uh, flashes at night where you feel, all of a sudden, you feel very hot. You feel like this rocket of, of heat just comes up from your feet, from your toes, right up to your head. It just shoots up. And the next minute you're feeling just as cold. Um, but then he said, look, you know, lots of herbal teas, strip off at night. When you feel hot, you strip off. When you feel cold, you cover up. And in terms of your mood, there is nothing we can do about it because I really don't want to put you on medication for this. You know, invest in your health, you know, see what, you know, you know, cut coffee out, lots of herbal teas, you know, lots of smoothies, just eat healthy, you know, and, and that will help you to cope with it. But then I have to say, I did try all of what he said and nothing worked. And in the end, I had to say to myself, I will need to learn how to cope with this. How, how do I live with this? You know, how do I live with not remembering things on a day-to-day -day basis? And one of the things that I tried to do in terms of my memory, which was the most uh, drastic thing that happened to me during the menopause, I started writing things down on a daily basis, you know, keeping a diary of things that I have to do. Um, what I did the day before and things like that. But again, keeping the diary, often I would forget the diary, forget the diary in the house and not sure where, you know, frantically, I find myself frantically looking for my diary because I've left my diary somewhere and not sure where, I couldn't remember. So it was just a, a battle. Um, but on a daily basis, what I try to do is to keep calm. I realized that getting anxious, getting depressed about my symptoms, making my symptoms, you know, put me down, um, allowing all the things that I was going through, allowing these things to, to make me feel down because I, I wasn't in control, because I felt at the time that control of my life was taken away from me. And I wasn't in control of my own life. I wasn't in control of my feelings. I wasn't in control of the, my thoughts. You know, I just wasn't in control. So I had to learn to cope with not being in control. And how did I do that? I took it day by day, day by day. You know, I tried to calm myself right down. The advice I would give to women going through the menopause is that, as you can probably see, I am sweaty, not because I'm nervous, but because I'm still five years, almost five years on, I'm still going through the menopause. You know, um, 
it's a natural thing. I realize, when I realize what I'm going through, it's a natural process. It's like having a pregnancy and having the symptoms of a pregnancy. Naturally, you get morning sickness when you're pregnant. It's the same thing with the menopause. Naturally, when you go through the menopause, you will get symptoms of the menopause. And it's having a coping mechanism to help you cope with the symptoms that will help you and for me it was that calmness i really had to reassure myself that i am not going insane there's nothing wrong with me this is a natural thing millions of women have gone through this and millions of women will go through this you are not alone you know and so i had to learn to calm myself right down and say it's okay it's okay it will pass you know, no matter how long it lasts, these symptoms eventually will pass. And whatever you can do to make yourself feel better, whether it's taking up a new hobby, whether it's going swimming, going to the gym, putting yourself on a healthy eating plan, whatever makes you feel better within that period, then you do it. It's okay to just ride with what you feel comfortable doing to help you to cope. And one of the things that I often say to women is, do not allow anybody to tell you that this is unnatural and there's something wrong with you. Because medically speaking, it, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with you as such. Mentally, there's nothing wrong with you because initially I felt I was going insane. But there is nothing wrong. It's just the natural symptoms of the menopause. and just write it out I'd say. I would like to add though that I did change uh, my diet. Um, I began eating a lot healthier. I actually went on a hundred percent organic so I, everything that I eat or, or drink it's organic so I, and it helped me to, to feel better. I'm not recommending that everybody changes over to organic but I'm just saying for me that helps me I, I drink a lot of smoothies, I eat a lot of veg, um, lots of salad. I tend to kind of do two days where I just eat uh, meat-free meals, you know, just salads. And, and that, that has helped me to feel better. I haven't lost any weight as such because I'm not look, looking to lose weight, but I feel healthier within myself and I feel happier. So thank you very much to Verena there for sharing her story and we're so glad that you actually found something that works for you, Verena. Well, after the break, we'll go to Dr. Audrey Tang who's going to be explaining how changes in one's body due to things like the menopause affect us psychologically and Helena Shard will be bringing us the latest news around today's topic. Welcome back to today's Chrissy B Show, everybody. So we are speaking all about the menopause today and actually asking the question, can menopause be celebrated? So let's go to Dr. Audrey Tang, who's going to be explaining how changes in one's body affect us psychologically. But she's not here in the studio this time. We've done a bit of on-location filming because actually being outdoors is very good for menopausal women, although we weren't expecting the weather to be quite like this. Hi Chrissy and viewers, it's so lovely to be out here with the team. It is a little windy, um, but it's great to get out in the open air. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit about menopause and with the risk of giving too much information, I suffer quite badly once every month with temperature changes, uh, with quite heavy periods and that doesn't do much for my iron deficiency anemia and with that I get terrible bloating and then you start thinking we're heading into perimenopause and then per and then menopause itself 
Now, perimenopause starts at around the age of 30 onwards, but menopause itself can even start at 30, although the normal time is around ages 45 to 60. What can also happen is that symptoms of menopause can carry on after the age of 60 for about four plus years after the full year when your periods have stopped. If you're like me, I'm iron deficiency anemic, which means that I actually do have to top up my iron supplies, but I will always only do that with supplements as prescribed. That along with getting out in the open air, along with being with friends, even if like today it's a little bit windy, can feel a little uh, drop of rain, it's still good to go out with people because you can have fun, you start laughing and that's all part of good health. The whole thing to remember when it comes to getting older, life change doesn't have to mean a change in your lifestyle. The whole important thing to think about when you're remembering that you need to look after your mental health is that if you're feeling lethargic, if you're feeling fatigued and you're also suffering from low sex drive and maybe you haven't been as intimate, all of those things can affect us psychologically and it's very important to remember what makes us feel better about ourselves. Sometimes when all you want to do is curl up under a blanket and not go anywhere, you may start thinking, well why should I bother? because who cares, no one's going to see me. The thing to remember is you could care, you will see you, you've got mirrors at home and when I say do something that makes you feel nice or look nice or just feel a little bit better about yourself, I always think it gets me out under my blanket, I put on something that I like, I might put on some makeup, I might do my hair in a way that makes me feel, feel good. It's not necessarily about looks, it's all about how it makes you feel. And if you can work out what it is that makes you happy, that's gonna keep you going. The other important thing is, sometimes our physical symptoms are affected um, or affect our psychological ones, which means that it is really important to go to your doctor to see about any physical symptoms. Once they're under control, you start remembering what healthy feels like and when you do remember that you start pursuing it a lot more so always think do what's good for you what makes you feel happy what makes you feel positive because you see you and you care thank you very much to dr audrey tang there and well done for braving that wind audrey well, now let's see what Helena Shard has to say in this week's A Helping of Happy, who actually also filmed outdoors for us. Hello, Helena. How are you on this lovely, <gasps> glorious Sunday? I'm having such a soaked through. lovely time. I'm having a really lovely time on the river. So really, yes. it's very special. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So really pleased that times have changed, thank goodness. Health advocates and celebrities are speaking up, you know, about changing the conversation around the menopause. And I am guilty of not knowing that much about it. So yeah. it's been Me really too. interesting research, yeah. definitely. So not as frightening, not as secretive as it used to be. So opening that conversation so everyone understands. Yeah. Um, I won't talk about the olden days because that's a bit, was a bit frightening. But um, so, right, yeah, it's actually, <laughs> obviously, all the, all the things that they said, poor, yeah. poor women. Um, okay. So for, I'm going to talk about Meg Matthews is my poster girl advocate for the menopause. I mean, she's mm. really, really good. So she's a former Britpop. Um, she's probably most known for being married to Noel Gallagher. Mm -hmm. And she experienced symptoms of the menopause in her early 40s and thought it was, um, well, she didn't think it was a menopause because she didn't know anything about it. So that just goes to yeah. show. And in fact, every case study I've been looking at, people just didn't know what it was. Yeah. They thought they were really, really ill. Um, she thought she had meningitis, I think it was. Oh. Um, so it's like glandular fever, not meningitis. Okay, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> and she, she didn't go out for three months. Um, she, was, she had 32 of 34 most common symptoms. She was incredibly wow. achy, nauseous. Her joints were incredibly inflamed. Um, but she developed her own way to cope. Okay. Water, drinking loads of water, weight training, mm -hmm. and cannabis oil mm -hmm. um, were the ways forward, kept her really, really strong. And she's now 52. 
Um, so she started in her 40s, early 40s, and she is has so much energy and enthusiasm. So it just goes yeah. to show she turned everything around and is incredibly strong. And when she realised that the menopause was the root of her problem, she set about, you know, with a huge passion to inform all the ladies yeah. in the world and obviously you all the men really in the think world. Something seriously wrong. Yeah, you don't I mean, it's absolutely. The hormones, like, I mean, she, a... yeah, she was absolutely shocked as well. She couldn't believe that she didn't know anything about it, and it obviously you need understanding mm. at this time in their life. So, especially when some women start so early as well, yeah. or they start, you kind of think, oh, it's something that happens in your fifties maybe, but not like thirties, forties. I know, shocking. Mm. So now she's the happiest ever. She's and she just her best thing is that she can help people. Yeah, which yeah. is which is lovely. And um, another great thing, this is something I want to do, and I know some of the people from our little group that do it. So cold water swimming uh -huh. apparently is a brilliant. You plunge into sea temperatures and it helps with the effects of the menopause which I found wow. interesting. Well so, I'll do that anyway because I don't care. If I'm from yeah. near a beach I have to go in the water. I, I, actually, I don't care if it's I cold. I think that's what it's to do with. I yeah. think it's just that thrill, that excitement, carefree feeling, no yeah. inhibitions, yeah. that child, you want that inner child. Mm -hmm. And also you, you're not you're not dressing up so you don't there's no comparisonitis scenario, yeah. just a lot of fun. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. So other people as well, Carol Vorderman recently talking about it. She's, I mean, she felt suicidal actually, but she really? said you have to, yeah, wow. she really did feel suicidal, a very dark place, but she said you have to find your balance. Um, for her, it was HRT, so hormone replacement mm. therapy and talking therapies. Um, but now she's saying, that, you know, everyone's got a really exciting chapter of their life to, to progress on to, so it is a positive. So where you look at things as well, okay, you are going to go through those symptoms and everything yeah. like that but if you kind of let it get to you and you don't yeah. think positive and do something positive it will get you down yeah, it will get you down but I mean also to remember that some people don't actually even feel anything yeah. some people go through it and they don't have any symptoms at all which wow. must be amazing <laughs> uh, yeah. but moving on to so uh, Lorraine Kelly was also inspired because she spoke to to um, Carol Vorderman so she opened up as well and she went through a really sad time. She lost everything. She couldn't. She couldn't get any excitement. You know, her children passed you know, degrees, and just she was completely flat. Yeah. She's got her equilibrium back. And again, it was HRT that was her her saviour. And it was they changed yeah. the dose around, um, which has also helped her with oste osteoporosis. Parosis. Yeah. Um, so singer Michelle Heaton, everyone knows, she took a brave step and she, she actually started the menopause earlier because she had her ovaries removed, she had um, a gene that she, obviously that was to help her. Yeah. And she was talking about how she, she, it was outrageous for her because obviously it started really early and she urges everyone to speak about it. Um, saying a lot of couples split during this time, partners obviously not told enough about the menopause and obviously if, as a woman you don't know, yeah, obviously true. your partner's not going to know. Uh -huh. So she's got a very supportive husband so she's very lucky but moving on to Ulrika Johnson who was recently talking about her brain fog again she didn't know what was going on and yeah. for a long time she thought she was developing dementia um, weight gain because completely uncomfortable but again she didn't know anything and yeah. she split with her husband which is oh, a real no. shame and it's she can't they can't go back on it all but it just goes to show that yeah. it's so important to talk about things but the good thing about Arika is she is back on her feet it's her time of life and right. she says now it's her time to shine she's back as a record, uh, broadcaster and she's doing all the things she loves wonderful that's great to hear Helena thank you oh, so much and we'll see you, you back in the studio next we time we will do <laughs> thank you thank so back you. to me in the studio yeah. Thanks very much to Helena and to me actually on that video. So exercise, as we know, is good for everyone and lifts your mood. So here's an intense ab workout with fitness expert Natalia Katowska. Hey guys, it's me again, your fitness expert Natalia Kotowska and Kate Away with Nat. And today I have for you some ab workout. Again, three intense exercises, so stay with me. First one, we're gonna go feet on the mat, more or less 90 degrees. So 90 degree heels, knees, hips. You're gonna open your palms up and you're gonna try to reach to your ankles, reach to your ankles. Hop up to the side, you wanna squeeze your obliques, try to reach to that ankle, palms up to the side, keep breathing. So you're gonna really kind of try to make a, as much of a use of your obliques as you can, side to side, side to side. 
keep breathing, keep breathing all the time. That's your first one, guys. Second one, your feet gonna stay in exactly the same position. You're gonna grab your hands, you're gonna go one in, one out. Now make sure your chest is open, chin all the way up, you wanna look towards the ceilings and you go up, down, up, down. Make sure you keep breathing all the time. One more time, in and out, in and out. And the very, very last one, your feet all the way up, hands close to your body, open your hands, you're gonna push that ceiling with your feet all the way up, take it and all the way down. Try to have your legs as straight as possible, all the way up, use your pelvis, use your hips, Breathe all the way up, down. One more time, up and down. And again, we have three exercises. Go for 20 repetitions each, take slight break, 10 seconds break in between, repeat that three times. Trust me, you're gonna feel your core after this. So thank you so much for watching today and I will see you next time. Thank you very much to Natalia. So after the break, we speak to our resident family coach, Sharon Lawton, on how you can manage family life when you're going through something like the menopause. And we're actually looking at menopause from all angles today. So we also have on founder of From the Seed and Tisserand Aromatherapy expert, Joe Kellett, for tips on the best essential oils that you can use that will actually help. Hi, I'm Chrissy B, host of the UK's only TV programme dedicated to mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show, which airs on MyTV Sky 191 every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Follow our social media on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter at Chrissy B Show and our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. For more information, visit chrissybshow.tv. Welcome back everyone to our show all about the menopause and now it's time to speak to our resident family coach Sharon Lawton on how you can manage family life when you're going through such a challenging time. Welcome to the show Sharon. Hello Chrissy. That's not challenging for everybody is it but no. some people do like you know have a hard time. Yeah yeah and I think um, it's interesting isn't it because menopause is one of those funny things that sometimes women don't really talk about a lot. Yeah. I think it's really important for, for us to ensure that our families know what to expect, yeah. you know? So, uh, you know, I speak a lot about communication in the family, don't I? So I yeah. think it comes back down to that. So we need to communicate. We need to make sure everybody understands what that's about. It's about progression of the family. It's a, we, we, you know, we talk to teenagers about hormones. Yeah. We talk to young people about their bodies changing and growing. So this sort of, you know, we talk about, you know, sort of, you know, new birth and babies and that. So it's the next part of life, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, and understanding what's going on in the family and why mum might be a little bit moody or mm. why mum might be reacting differently in a, you know, in a particular way. So. It is about making sure that our families understand what's going on yeah. so that they can be more empathic and support their mum, actually, yeah. because you know it's happening at a time when probably families are a little bit older. So they are at a place where they can understand or need it's to understand true, yeah. what's going on. You know, they're yeah. not they're not little ones anymore. Yeah. You know, they're old enough to understand what's going on. We um, do have the, maybe have the grandkids as well, I suppose. Also, well. I think yes, yeah, yeah. it's good to talk about it with everyone because absolutely, like you know, there are partners that break up because of something like yeah. this because yeah. they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Say, for example, all of a sudden that 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 woman kind of wants to spend more time on her own and mm -hmm. like she doesn't want to noise around her and like the grandkids are yeah. wondering you know, why isn't grandma yeah you know taking taking notice of me anymore that could lead to insecurities or yeah. it, it, it what have I done so wrong many, yeah exactly mm -hmm. so many levels and it comes back to as I said it's communication yeah and if we can communicate then actually we can understand if we can understand then we can be more empathic of each other yeah, yeah. but I think the other thing Chrissy for me is also um about um sort of taking ownership and responsibility. So we sort of say, you know, sort of what can the family do? But it's also what can I do as a 
as a woman, as a, yeah. you know, and, and that comes down to sort of self-nurturing and self-care and making sure we look after our own needs. Because if we can look after our own needs during mm. that time, yeah. then we're going to be in a better place to maybe manage a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to be able to say, do you know what? I need to take some time for me. Um, and taking time for me means that then I can be a better mum, better grandma, yeah. better, mm -hmm. you know, because of that, yeah. recognising those needs. Yeah. And I suppose for family members, then they would try to be understanding and, and yeah. just give that space if, if it's needed. Yeah, I think so. And, oh, you it know, could be the opposite. It could be like they need more attention. Maybe. Well, it could be, you know, yeah. whatever the needs are. But, you know, yeah. if we don't communicate what our needs are, mm. um, then we're not going to get them met. Yeah. But because it's happening at that later stage in life, then for me, you know, it, it, we almost we almost shortchange maybe our um, older, you know, sons and daughters to be able to say, Do you know what, mum, you know, it, it looks like you're having a tough time at the moment. You know, why don't I make you a cup of tea or why don't I cook yeah, the yeah. dinner this weekend? Yeah. Um, you know, and it's that, you know, it's a circle of life, but, you know, it's, it's that sort of um, growth within the family yeah, and, right. and, you know, um, sons and daughters being able to give back yeah. to support mum after all of those times that mum's been supporting me. It's so true, Sharon. I know. It's time to give back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lovely idea. Sharon, thank you so much, my brother. Oh, always a pleasure. <laughs> and we'll see you again very soon. Hope so. So we are actually looking at menopause from all angles today and now it's time to go to founder of From the Seed and Tisserand aromatherapy expert Joe Kellett for tips on the best essential oils that can be used. Welcome back to the show, Joe. Thank you for having me. So what do you what are your personal thoughts about menopause? You believe it's to be celebrated, don't I you? I think it can be celebrated. Um, yeah. for some women it's a, it's not an easy journey, mm -hmm. but it's gonna happen to all of us, and I think we have to embrace that. I think the important thing is to empower ourselves as women, yeah. is to understand what's going on mm -hmm. and what's so lovely about the show this evening. You're looking looking at it from diet and lifestyle and exercise, and all those factors are really important. important. Um, but it's going to happen to all of us. It's nothing to be fixed. It's mm. something to embrace and enjoy, hopefully, yeah. but not for everybody. For us, you know, women approaching the menopause now, we don't feel old mm -hmm. compared to how our mums possibly felt. So it's a subject that's not as taboo yeah. as it has been, which is brilliant. I think we need to talk about it more, mm -hmm. and I think we need to talk about it in a positive way. Definitely. So if we think about sort of 30 years ago, how we talked about periods, and it was all a bit, oh, we don't talk about that. Menopause is a little bit like that. So it's up to us to talk about it in a positive way to our daughters, our nieces, yeah. young people, because it's normal. It's yeah, totally exactly. normal. Yeah. And you're going to be telling us today how essential oils can actually yes, help. Yes, of course. Um, yes. As an aromatherapist, of yes. course, I'm going to talk about the oils. I think um, uh, for, from a woman's point of view, I think it would be amazing to seek out the help of an aromatherapist because menopause is such a multifaceted mm. Um, experience and a, an aromatherapist can look at your particular symptoms so whether it be night sweats or insomnia or mood swings and then choose the oils accordingly but I've brought four wonderful okay. oils for us to um, have a little play with so as yeah. usual we'll have a little smell All right. so the first one as usual I'm not going to tell you what it is until you've had a smell okay. um, this is a hormone regulator it's a herb it's quite I'm an interesting regulator. smell. I think it's lovely. <laughs> it smells, it smells a little bit like, like lavender, but not okay. quite like... I mean, it's the same family, so okay. it's a herb family. It's called clary sage. Okay. So it's a hormone it's regulator, nice. it's a euphoric, and it's potentially yeah. an aphrodisiac. Oh, so really? That's, that's okay. good. That's a good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Then we've got um, this one, which is uh, quite floral mm -hmm. and sweet. I think you know this oil. We may have... Uh, talked about this one before in a different... And what's this one? Let me, let me smell Have a smell there. first. Yep, I do have this one. This is geranium. It is geranium. Yeah, you're absolutely and what's right. what's this one good for? So again, this is a classic hormone regulating oil mm -hmm. and euphoric, so it's uplifting and positive. This okay. oil is also really good for the skin. And for a lot of women, skin issues are quite a concern okay. in um, menopause. As the estrogen starts to um, sort of disappear from our bodies, it can change the texture of our skin. Okay. So geranium is a really good skin tonic. How would you use it then? If well, I'm going like... to talk about the third one oh, okay, and then all right. put the and then three put this, together. Okay. If that's okay. See, I'm getting a bit of excited. That's fine. That's cool. <laughs> so this one, 
Uh, well, I'm not looking at the names. Okay, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, let me see. <laughs> see what you think of this one. It smells kind of a bit like eucalyptus. Yeah, you're right. It's a tree. And kind so of peppermint right. tea as yeah, well. Yeah, very time. good. Yeah, so it's like menthol-y. You're good at this, Here you are. It's cypress. Oh, so it's a tree. Okay, yeah. So the trees are all very strengthening and give yeah. us endurance and stability. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the magic uh, property of cypress is that it's an astringent. So it's really good for the hot flushes. Right, so okay. those three together would be a really good combination. They cover quite a few of the symptoms of menopause, mm -hmm. but are particularly good for hot flushes, which is for a lot of women can be really intolerable and something they get quite concerned yeah. about, understandably. Yeah. So those three oils together into a into a blend. You're not going to put them neat on the skin. You put them into a base oil. Okay. So in 20 milliliters of base oil, sunflower, sweet almond, olive oil, mm -hmm. you're going to add 10 drops in total. So 20 ml of base oil, 10 drops. And I would do with those, I would do three of clary sage, three of geranium, and four of cypress. Okay. And then you put that into a blend. And that 20 ml is going to last a good few weeks. And then apply it to the tummy and the chest okay. yeah. every other night before going to bed. Not every night. Give yourself a break okay. every other night. Um, and it can help to reduce hot flushes. Oh, that's really plus, good to know. it's good for the skin. Yeah, plus, yeah. it's going to be euphoric and uplifting and hormone regulating. Okay. So those three Would together. You, could you put that in a diffuser as well? You could put a diffuser, it, but it's, it's better. As... It's better to have the oils on the skin right, for them okay. to work on the body. And you can use it on the face as well. I wouldn't use that body. one so much on the face. I would use at those um, levels. Okay. I would use that on the body. This okay. one, however, is a little um, extra special. Okay. So this one can be applied to the face, but for the face, you just want to put one drop in five milliliters. Okay. So it's a much lesser dilution because the skin on the face is more sensitive, mm -hmm. and we have to be more um, have to be more careful with the skin on the face. But I couldn't not bring this oil when talking okay. about women and uh, women's health. It's very complicated. It smells, it smells like something my mum used to make <laughs> sweets with, Greek yeah, sweets. Yeah, it smells, it smells like rose water. It's rose, yeah, it's rose otto. Oh, it's so it's, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, it's it's refreshing. the epitome it's of femininity. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's harmonious. It's, it's, yeah. it's a tonic for the heart. Oh, it's lovely. It celebrates love and... and this oil is it's a happy is, smell, isn't it? It is a happy smell. Yeah. It's a, it's very euphoric. It's lovely. Um, it's very expensive, but mm. it's really worth it to invest in it. Yeah. And this is an oil that I would put on the face. Right. So one drop in five ml, and use it as a night oil. You know, put it on at night. Let the oil sink into the skin. Yeah. It's going to be rejuvenating. It's great for mature skin, and it's just got that beautiful, uplifting feminine yeah, smell. It does. It's, it's amazing. The smell is yeah. really lovely. Yeah, Guys, really... you have to try it to, <laughs> to understand. <laughs> yeah, smell a vision. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's wonderful. Jo, thank you so much, That's my tall. darling. That was That's really tall. useful. It's a pleasure. Pleasure we'll as always. we'll see you again soon see for you your next soon. segment. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, everybody. So after the break, we'll be getting some expert advice from Dr. Rob Hicks on what happens to a woman physically when she goes through the menopause, the treatments available, and what a woman can do to help herself. And we'll also have our nutritionist Hannah Richards to give us some advice on menopause and nutrition and showing us a simple recipe. But just before that, let's take a look at this. Are you watching Moses and the Ten Commandments on my TV? If not, don't miss out on this amazing story that will touch your heart and catch your attention from Monday to Friday at 9 p.m. on my TV. And don't forget to follow our Facebook and Instagram page. that uh, raises awareness uh, is brilliant and this is great because it's so outwardly shown you know, people can see them dancing everybody learns to dance it's brilliant um, so it just I, I think is another way that we can bring mental health into conversations and help people to kind of tackle this topic
Welcome back to today's program, everyone, all about the menopause. And this one is for the ladies and also the gents, if you have a woman in your life, because it's going to help you understand them better. So now it's time to go to Dr. Rob Hicks to tell us what happens to a woman physically when she goes through the menopause, the treatments available, and what a woman can do to help herself. And guess what? He's also filmed on location. Hello and welcome to Doctor on the Water here at the Christie B Show. I'm Dr. Rob Hicks. Now you'll notice it's really, really windy here, but we're not going to let a little bit of wind get in the way of helping you enjoy good mental and physical health and well-being. So we're going to talk about the menopause. This is the stage in a woman's life, a natural stage in a woman's life, when the levels of the female hormone estrogen decline. And this means that and the ovaries no longer produce eggs. So a woman may notice that her periods become less frequent over a period of weeks, months, years, for example. Sometimes though, it can happen quite suddenly. Now, the menopause generally happens sometime between the ages of 45 and 55. And the average age in the UK for a woman to go through the menopause is age 51. Now, because she's no longer producing eggs from the ovaries, it's no longer possible for a woman to fall pregnant naturally. Now, most women going through the menopause, they do suffer symptoms of the menopause. Some are relatively mild, but for some they can be really quite severe and, and can affect the quality of life. Now, I'm sure that you've heard of hot flushes and night sweats. These are really common symptoms of the menopause. Other symptoms might be vaginal dryness, pain during sex, a, a loss of libido, so a loss of sex drive. Um, problems with memory, problems with concentration, fatigue, anxiety, stress, sometimes depression. These are all well-recognized symptoms of the menopause. Now, for some women, about one in a hundred, they go through the menopause prematurely, earlier than would be expected, so before they reach the age of 40. Now, generally speaking, often nobody knows exactly why this has happened, but some of the possible causes that can trigger premature menopause is if a woman, for, for medical reasons, needs to have her ovaries removed, or maybe she's had chemotherapy or radiotherapy and that's damaged the ovaries, or she may have an underlying medical condition. But the good news is there are lots of ways that you can manage and overcome the symptoms of the menopause so that you maintain and enjoy a good quality of life. So for example, your doctor may prescribe hormone replacement therapy to replace the estrogen that your body's no longer producing. If vaginal dryness is an issue, then lubricants, gels, creams, ointments may be recommended. And for those who have stress and anxiety and, and depression, then cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is a very good option. Then there are lots of lifestyle things you can do. So for example, lots of exercise and activity, eating a healthy diet, losing weight if you're carrying a bit too, too much. These can all help manage the menopause. And if you think about hot flushes and night sweats, then if you keep the, the room that you're in cool and you wear cool clothing like cotton clothing, have cool drinks, use a fan, this can help manage those symptoms. And for those who've got stress and anxiety, then in addition to CBT, maybe um, antidepressants if necessary, there's also relaxation therapy. So you might do yoga, you might do some deep breathing exercises, or basically do anything that you find pleasurable that, that reduces your stress and helps you keep stress under control rather than stress controlling you. So as you see, there's lots of positive things about managing the menopause and its symptoms. So if you think that you may be going through the menopause and you're being troubled by symptoms, then do please have a word with your doctor. He or she can make the diagnosis and then advise you on the best treatments. So you go through this natural part of your life. It's a natural part of a woman's life, the menopause, with good health, good quality of life, happy with good mental and physical well-being. Thank you very much to Dr. Rob Hicks there. So now I have my nutritionist, Hannah Richards, who's going to be 
making menopause muffins. Menopause muffins. <laughs> Have you ever heard of such a thing? But yes, Hannah has created it. <laughs> so <laughs> Hannah, take it away. Great. Okay, so Chrissy, um, all I need you to get going with is grating both of those. Top okay. and tail them and then yep. grate them both into that bowl. Right, my love. Um, so um, I'm going to use uh, two different flours to make these muffins. You can basically make muffins with anything, but you do need a, a, a grain. So I'm going to use a, a brown bread flour, which is gluten-free. Um, and I'm going to use a chickpea flour as well. But you can really use anything you like. Um, so there should be about, um, if you're using cups, two cups of flour, and in grams, it probably looks like 260 grams. So I'm just going to use a bit of both. But you also need to use your eye as well because the mixture doesn't want to be too uh, runny. It needs to okay. be um, a little bit thick. Uh, so then you're going to put a bit, one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of sea salt. And then we're going to add some turmeric. Now, turmeric is a really nice anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. um, and it's really good for all female hormones um, uh, and in for, for inflammation as well. Yes, I was going to ask you why they're called menopause muffins and now you're giving us the answer. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is that some of these flowers, so like all your legumes, for example, are full of what we call phytoestrogens. And phytoestrogens mimic the, um, mimic the uh, effects of estrogen. And because estrogen declines as we get older, um, and that's why phytoestrogens are good. So that's what the, uh, the flower looks like. Um, and, some and some black pepper. Okay. Then I'm, I'm going frantically grating here. Frantically I'm great, with great away, great away. Uh, then I'm going to add, this is goat's cheese. Are you a goat's cheese fan? Yes, I love it. Yeah. Um, you know, I find many things that I don't like, Hannah. I know, yeah. So I'm just going to chop the goat's cheese down into small bits. Remember, cheese is really full of calcium if it's a really good cheese. So you yeah. can use goat's cheese, you could use feta. Um, and again, it's really good for bone health, which again declines through menopause. Okay. So all these foods are really medicinal for the change in the hormonal cycle. Right. So you can just be a bit circumspect with your cheese. If you like goat's cheese, then throw loads in. And if you don't, keep it a little bit um, shy. Um, great. And there's our goat's cheese in there. Um, as I said, you can use feta or cow's uh, cheddar or something like that. And there's my offering. Brilliant. Finely grated. That's looking really good, Chrissy. There you go. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> did a good um, job, didn't I? You did an excellent Thank job. You. 10 out of 10. We're going to swap. Well. You can give that a little stir. And then in the uh, vegetable uh, pot, we're going to um, crack three eggs. So one, you hold them like that. Two, three, lovely, good. And we're going to give them a little stir at the same time. So Chrissy, as I'm stirring, can you start pouring some milk into here for me? Sure. Now, the key is, with the milk, you probably want, again, about two cups, which probably looks like 250 mils, mm -hmm. uh, or eight fluid ounces, actually. Um, there we go. But as you start mixing in the flour, you just don't want it to be too liquidy. Now, because the courgette, a little bit more, please, because the courgette and the carrot give Spray off a lot of water, water yeah. that's when the, the, the um, effects, sorry, the levels can change. Perfect. Okay, great. So I am then going to. You're going to see the consistency there. Yeah, that's the consistency there at the moment. There we go. So it is quite juicy. Yeah. So now I'm going to ask you to start pouring in the flour into the vegetables. There we go. What, what speed would you like? Um, just sort of a, a moderate speed. Okay, there you go. A little bit more than that, Chris. <laughs> Come on, don't go all day. Okay, someone's flicked you, sorry. <laughs> uh, there we go, brilliant. And we're just mixing in, and you can see that the mixture is getting thicker and thicker. There brilliant. You go, stump it in. There you go. Perfect. And so you really want to get a nice paste because. Um, we might need a tiny bit more milk. We can have a little bit more milk there, Chrissy. That's enough. Oh, I'm sorry, that kind of got me. 
And that's what not the rest to do. <laughs> that's, that's sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Put, stick a bit more flour in so, it. No, but this is good because if it does sort of feel, if you feel like it's too liquidy, exactly, you can just throw a little bit more flour in it and that's absolutely fine. So there we I go. I did it on purpose, you just so you purpose. can say that. I know. Um, so, Chrissy, can you just pull oh. out the muffin tray for me? And I'm going to start sure. putting these into the muffin tray. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. So all you do is just start putting them in here like this. Now, you should definitely grease your tray before. I have pre-greased this tray. Or did you do that, Chrissy, before we... Might that have was, done. Was that one Might of your have been jobs? Little, our little helpers, our little elves. Little elves. Yeah. So just be, you know, you can always go back to the tray and tidy it up. Um, but that's basically what it looks like. Nice thick mixture like that. And then you can put it in the oven for about, probably about 200 for about 20 minutes. But the key is, key is with everything, is that it wants to look like it's golden on top. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. And put those into the oven. Put them into the oven for me, Chrissy. Okay. Thank you very much. And <laughs> after about 20 minutes, your muffin should look like this. Amazing! That way, <laughs> they look lovely, and we need to try them. We probably do. Yeah, it would be Should rude we? not to. Yes. So these. Um, Don't worry about the table. We'll clean that afterwards. So let's. When so this is um, exactly. You? This is like a little. Um, let me just give it a score around. Do, 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 do. So menopause muffins in the shape of a heart. Menopause muffins in the shape of a heart. Oh, I'm gonna struggle getting these guys out. <laughs> There we go. Thank you very much. And oh, I'll just it's grab It's still one. warm. It's still warm because they've just come out of the oven. Mm. Oh, that is and divine. Pop mine out. Mm. Guys, what can mm. I say? Delicious. Oh, good, aren't they? Uh -huh. Even if I do say so myself. This must go in your new cookbook. It must. It must. Can't wait for your book, Anna. Thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this is delicious, guys. Honestly, you have to try these at home. Not just for menopausal women, but for everybody, I would say. Yeah, you could share them with your husband or your family. Yes. You could even put a little parmesan on top. Yes. Wonderful. Once they're nice and warm. So thank you so much, Hannah. Pleasure. Glad you like them. See you again next time. Absolutely. Okay, everybody. So now it's time to go to my final thought of the day, and it's going to be on location. So everyone, we've reached the end of today's programme. I really hope that you found it useful and informative. Thank you to all my resident guests and also to Verena for sharing her story and her experience with the menopause. So the underlying theme um, in our show today is to make sure that you do get you know, help for any, any symptoms that you're going through. Please go to see your GP, get advice, find something that works for you that makes you feel better as well. And one of the things as well that I thought was really useful on today's program is how it can affect relationships too, because you know, as we heard from the news, there have been unfortunately breakups due to menopause when the, the woman didn't know what was going on, you know, things arguments started and then relationships even break down. So it's very, very important actually that the men watch this program as well to know what the symptoms are so they can actually help their partners. Because if you don't know what's going on and your your partner's just moody or you know, going through all these things, these unknown things, of course it can affect relationships. So it's, you know, this this program was as much for the men as it was for the ladies as well, so that you, you know, you have a, a friend, a partner, um, your mum going through something, at least you know what it is and you can offer the best support to them as well. Well, everybody, if uh, we are going now, but if you have a story that you would like to share on the program, please do get in touch with us by emailing info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet or Instagram us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye-bye for now.